Hi, welcome to Psychiatric News Live from the annual meeting in Toronto, Canada. I'm Babern Watts, and today I'm joined by Jeffrey Lieberman, who is the Chair of Psychiatry at Columbia University in New York Presbyterian Hospital. How are you doing, Dr. Lieberman? Good to be with you, Babe. So today you will be giving a talk on the notorious past and bright future of psychiatry, in which you will feature your book, Shrinks. Can you right. tell us about that? Right, well, the, the um, motivation to write Shrinks was really uh, came from my experience um, in the APA and, and as the APA president and having to contend with the uh, legislation, the policies, and the public attitudes towards psychiatry and the way it was really inhibiting people who were genuinely in need of treatment of their mental illness from getting care. When you think about it, it's quite amazing that psychiatry has the dubious distinction of being the most suspected and disrespected and stigmatized medical specialties. It's the only medical specialty that has an anti-movement. And when you talk to people, whether it's the public, whether it's the government people, and you ask them, what is mental illness? What is psychiatry? What's the difference between psychiatry and psychology? It's a very, very fuzzy picture, and people don't really know. So the goal was to really try and set the record straight about mental illness and what psychiatry can do f to treat it. So what are some of the events in the past, as, as the name of the session, Notorious Past, that will be highlighted? I think the reason why we uh, are in this position has to do with the fact that psychiatry was uh, evolved like all of the medical specialties in the 19th century, but um, we could not make the scientific progress at the same pace as did the other medical specialties, surgery, cardiology, gastroenterology, OBGYN, orthopedics. And as a result, um, theories were invented and uh, embraced for which there was no scientific evidence. And probably the uh, biggest of these was, was psychoanalytic theory from Freud. Now that was a brilliant theory of understanding the mind and human behavior, but one, it was never subject to scientific verification with research, and two, it only applied to people like you and I, Vabe, uh, the worried well. Uh, it didn't apply to schizophrenia, manic depressive illness, depression, panic disorder, obsessive compulsive disorder, addiction, autism, or dementia. And it really wasn't until after World War II in the 1950s that psychiatry reached a crisis and a turning point. And it redirected itself in a, a scientific way and it rejoined or began to rejoin the mainstream of medicine. And now we're in a fabulous position in terms of the strength of our science and our capability of treating people. The problem is, is all the old attitudes persist. So how do you think we can get rid of those old attitudes? Well, education is certainly important, and the media, uh, no disrespect intended, uh, doesn't help because it sensationalizes mental illness. Um, but um, education through public uh, uh, awareness from media is one thing, and research is another. The more progress we make in understanding how the brain works, underlies behavior, produces the disturbances we recognize as mental illness and provides ways to treat it, um, the better we'll be. But it's still a work in progress. So the second half of the session will be the bright future. Exactly. When and do you foresee? The future is extremely bright. So when people say, is the glass half empty or half full, it's undoubtedly half full. Um, we uh, have a very strong scientific workforce focusing on the brain and behavior. Um, and our message is one of hope and change. Uh, first, to be able to provide treatment that currently exists to the vast numbers of people with mental illness who are going untreated. The majority of people who have mental illness don't get treatment. I mean, imagine if we had infectious diseases like the flu, like polio, like tuberculosis, like um, pneumonia, like AIDS, and we weren't using antibiotics, we weren't using vaccines, we weren't using antiretroviral therapies. That's what exists with, with, uh, with, in psychiatry and mental illness. So it's really hope and change. And the thing that I think will probably get the most attention from our government leaders and the public is the fact that when you provide this broad, comprehensive, state-of-the-art, evidence-based level of care, what it rolls up to do is to alleviate a lot of the social ills that we're so troubled by, such as too many mentally ill people in prison, 
uh, these mass violent incidents, which to a significant degree are perpetrated by untreated people with severe mental illness, uh, homelessness, domestic violence, uh, and um, even the reduction of health care costs for all types of health care, because one of the biggest cost drivers for medical and surgical health care services is psychiatric comorbidity. Well, thank you, Dr. Lieberman, and um, I look forward to reading your book, Shrinks, as well as going to the session today. Thanks, babe. Nice for the, thanks thank for the you. conversation. Come back for more Psychiatric News Live from the annual meeting in Toronto, Canada. Is that okay?